Hey guys, welcome back. Today I want to talk to you about the Fusion 360 announcement and a few things that you can do about it. Let's get to it. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, sorry for the mess at the workshop here today, but uh, I've got a lot of projects going on and I'm hoping to get some of these filmed and get them out there on YouTube. You know, things are changing right now. If you look at that Fusion 360 announcement, it is crazy, right? I mean, many people are angered and upset and i don't blame them you know they they've invested a lot of time in this product i uh, made a lot of video tutorials uh, many of us youtubers made video tutorials on it i personally did not but i've looked at many uh trying to get this uh software down uh and, and then they come and they change the license as of october 1st 2020 uh, and it really puts a hurt on us hobbyist slash small business people but, you know, the whole 2020 thing has changed for a lot of people. Uh, it's put a lot of people on a bind. Many people were laid off. A lot of financial impact from this pandemic. You have to understand why Fusion 360 probably did this. They have a bottom line they have to meet, too. So, can you really be that upset with them? Yeah, for a while, but eventually you're going to have to do something about it. Let's talk a little bit about what's changed. I have on my screen up here behind me, some of these things have changed. Uh, there's, a, there's a file limit where you can only work on 10 consecutive files now. Now, I own, I'm a huge 3D modeling hobby, hobbyist, and I own a small business that I sell a lot of parts to. Here's some of the prototypes. I sell camera products. I sell gun products. Um, lots of Lots of crazy different things that I sell, along with more everyday products. Don't want to get into that. It's not about my business, but the key is my business needs design software to function. Um, so if you make enough money from this product, you should probably just buy it, right? I mean, I hate to say it, but if your livelihood revolves around design software, you should probably buy something that is supported, that when it breaks, you can call somebody up and say, hey, I paid for this, it's broken. Tell me how to fix it. But it comes down to, I'm looking at the subscription option. They have it at about 300 bucks a year right now. It's about $25 a month. It's probably worth it if you make enough money from this, <clears throat> from this product. Let's get to some, what we're gonna do about this, right? I personally only used Fusion 360 sparingly. Uh, I don't use, I'm a 3D modeler, right? I 3D print, and you've seen it on this channel before. I don't really use a lot of Fusion 360. So, what are we going to do about it? If you're a hobbyist like me with a small business, there's other options out there. And I'm talking about open source options. These are options that nobody should come in and buy out from underneath you. I say should. I suppose there's, there's going to be some someday that's going to happen. But, you could keep the version you have without you know, auto updates, turn that off and use that for as long as you can use it until it has bugs that you can't tolerate anymore. Let's get to some alternatives. If you've watched my channel at all, you know I use OpenSCAD probably the most. It's kind of like a programming language, only I would say much easier. Um, OpenSCAD is basically a file editor with a view of your model on the other side. So what you'll do is type in commands in the file editor you know, hit render and your object will show up in the, um, in the file preview section. Uh, once you're done, you can export all that to like an STL, which I do often, and um, load it up into your slicer and then print it out. So I can go in and do several different versions on when I'm designing something. And frankly, it's really easy. Um, but that's for me. This is, this is what I'm comfortable with, right? Um, so if you're not comfortable with typing commands and seeing results, OpenSCAD may not be for you. Another limitation I would say of OpenSCAD is you can't do, you can, I shouldn't say you can't. You will have more difficulty doing fancy round, rounded corners or bevels or things like that. Now there's several people that write libraries that you can import and use their code to make your bevels or rounds or whatever. Um, another advantage of OpenSCAD is if you go out to Thingiverse, their customizer is based on OpenSCAD. So if you find something that um, 
is customizable on Thingiverse. You can basically go in, download the code, see how these people made these things, and learn even more about it. That is one of the biggest advantages, I think, of OpenSCAD. Um, or, you know, you download their code, you figure out how it works, um, and then you can change things here and there to make something very custom for you, uh, which is it's just phenomenal. It's easy. Okay, so number one, open SCAD. There's an, there's an option. Uh, number two, um, Blender. Blender is a complicated beast, but it's awesome software. It can do many, many, many things, but I'm only going to talk about the 3D modeling aspect of this. Blender is going to be difficult to use, or difficult to figure out how to use in the beginning, but you have options for learning. And I highly suggest, if you're going to le learn to use new modeling software, Blender be on the top portion of your list. It's so, so powerful. Uh, you've got options to learn are um, YouTube, obviously. There's a Blender guy on YouTube that really does uh, a good tutorial. He makes a donut, I think, is what it is. I'll, I'll link that in the description so you can see. And, but he shows you like making basic shapes, making uh, holes or fillets or whatever you want to call those, right? As they go through uh, shapes, um, adding layers. Very, very, very powerful program. And you can do your rounds, your, your bevels. You can do those much easier. Uh, so highly recommend checking that out as an alternative to the Fusion 360 if you decide to dump it. Oh, another training uh, for Blender would be Udemy. I, I don't know if anybody's used Udemy, but it, you, uh, at certain times you can come up with a sale of $10 for a class, right? Um, they usually have that four or five times a year. Pick up buy your courses then, right? So, so they have complete courses on Blender um, and about any other software you want out there. So check that out, Udemy. I'll put a link to that in the description. The next option is FreeCAD. I tried to pick up FreeCAD a little bit earlier. I, I was never a CAD user in the beginning. If you were a CAD user in the beginning, FreeCAD is probably going to be much, much easier for you to learn. I started as a 3D modeler, so I never really learned a CAD program. Uh, so it's it's more difficult for me to learn, but if that's what you came from, CAD, check it out. It definitely could be worth it. It's it's 100% open source. I, there's there's difficulty in finding training for three for FreeCAD, um, but FreeCAD's training problems. There's not a lot of info out there. Um, now they have on their website a lot of practice exercises you can go through to get familiar with a product. And that's probably, if you're a current CAD user, like I said, you can go through those exercises and pick it up really fast. Uh, if you're not a CAD user, that's going to be more difficult. Well, that's all I have. And, you know, I'm sorry that this has happened um, to you because I know you're probably upset. But just want to let you know there's other options out there. Uh, I'm going to make an open, open SCAD playlist. I'm going to put it up here so you can click on it and check it out if you want to look at OpenSCAD. Um, I'm going to put some links to Blender and FreeCAD down in the description, so check those out. Uh, let me know your thoughts on this whole Fusion 360 thing, uh, what you're going to do moving forward. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know what you're going to do about this Fusion 360 uh, fiasco. Um, you know, if you do switch to one of these programs that I talked about in this video, do us all a favor. If you learn how to do something in it, just make a quick few minute video tutorial showing somebody how you did something. That is probably one of the best ways that, you know, you can make a difference in getting this stuff out there. Um, I've done several on OpenSCAD. Again, I'm going to link these as a, as a playlist here so you can watch those. But you, no matter how basic or easy you think it is, make a tutorial. Put it out there. People people are going to be wanting to find this information with, with these changes coming. Uh, at least more of the hobbyist type will be wanting to find this information uh, with these changes coming. So that's all we have for today. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time.